Last week, I set up a clubhouse room to discuss buying property. There was only one or two of us within the group, but I felt that some of the topics we discussed were worth actually sharing with you. And one of the questions that came up was, when is the best time to buy real estate? I do have a clubhouse invitation to give away, so make sure you stay watching to see how you can get that invite. So in this video, I'm going to discuss timing for real estate deals. I'm also going to discuss when is the best time of the year to actually source deals. And at the very end of the video, I will talk a little bit about the current uh, viewing requirements that we have during lockdown. So there are lots of quotes out there in terms of advice, in terms of buying real estate. From the best time to buy was five years ago, or don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait. There's other ones, the best time to buy was yesterday, if not yesterday, today. And I'm sure there's loads of other quotes that kind of touch on that topic. There is some sense to these quotes, but sometimes I feel that luck can actually play a huge amount in terms of timing a real estate deal. And I feel that I've been very lucky in terms of my real estate deals, perhaps look, more lucky that I actually didn't go through with some deals in terms of the timing just not working out. But that said, I do believe that if a deal does stack up well, when you actually buy it, doesn't have that big of a consequence uh, overall in terms of the deal or how good a deal was. If it is a good deal, it should stack up at any stage. I've been involved in acquisitions in one way or the other for the last 17 years, uh, working in-house for a large company or advising clients. And I, I'd have to say if I added it all up, it would be in the hundreds of millions. And I have seen some great deals and I've seen some horror shows that people did advise against as well. But hindsight is 2020. So in terms of being lucky in real estate or being in lucky in terms of timing, I actually am really referring to myself. I feel I've been quite lucky. Um, two years out of college, uh, I was working in a good company. I had a good pay. I was working in the property industry. And I went and looked for a mortgage. And I was told I could get anywhere up to about 400,000. And this was at the time of 100% mortgages and all that around 2007. I did uh, look for some property at the time. I ended up homing in on a two bed apartment in Sandyford. It was about 420, if I can recall right. And I did all my numbers on it and I was really kind of interested in the property. I was looking to go after this property, but when I did my numbers more and more, I realized that this just didn't stack up that well and it didn't seem like a great deal. I was also doing a lot of valuations from a work point of view and I felt that there definitely was some sort of bubble happening and a lot of deals just were being overpriced. So I decided in the end not to actually go ahead with the purchase and I walked away from it. But, and I think I was quite lucky in that sense because if I had gone ahead and bought that property, the likelihood is I probably would have struggled to pay the mortgage and also the property probably fell to close to maybe 250 uh, around 2010, 2011. Eventually probably only now is back up to about 350. So I think I was quite lucky in terms of the timing there that I actually didn't go ahead with the deal. It wasn't just my personal home that I was actually looking for at the time back in 07. Funding was available quite easily. I had spoken to a bank. I hadn't got formal approval or anything like that, but I had been told that funding for an investment property and a fairly significant investment property would be made available for me if I found the right deal. I did go off and look and I did bid on a few properties. I did set my maximum bid before I got into the bidding process and luckily enough for me, and I'll say this again, luckily enough for me, I was outbid on every single one of them and I didn't go over my maximum bid because if I look back at it now, I would have been severely stung on a lot of those properties if I actually had gone ahead. I'm not saying I was smarter than the market at that time, but I definitely felt that I did my numbers, I did my valuations and I didn't go above those. But the market definitely went over those uh, figures that I put on the property in terms of my valuations. But I'm really glad now, looking back from a timing point of view, that those deals did not work out for me. So again, hindsight is 2020. But looking back at those deals, I don't believe I was smarter than the market in any stretch of imagination. But I was probably just a little bit more cautious than the market at the time. And I am very lucky that none of those deals or none of those bids were actually accepted. 
In 2013, I was on the hunt again for a lot of property. However, my appetite was far bigger than my funds allowed me and I wasn't actually able to secure a huge amount. But at the time in 2013, I did secure a family home. That family home, I think I bought at the very bottom of the market and I will give myself some credit in terms of timing the bottom of the market at that time in 2013. Because when I sold the property at the height of the market in 2019, the house had gone up by nearly 70%. I would love to give myself credit for timing the top of the market uh, well, or extremely well in 2019 in terms of when I sold out of the properties, but I actually sold those properties for personal reasons. So therefore I cannot give myself credit for actually timing the market perfectly in 2019 either. And to be honest with you, it was luck again. It was personal reasons, but at the same time, a good bit of luck that actually helped me sell out at the top of the market. I tell you all of this because timing does have a big impact on how successful a property deal can be. Big companies look at trends all the time. They look at economic trends, they look at retail trends, they look at household trends, they look at population trends and local area trends to determine where they're gonna buy and when they're gonna sell. Stephen Vernon, you should definitely go Google him. He is the founder of Green Properties and also Green Reef. He timed the property market extremely well when he sold out before the crash in 2008. He also bought back in around 2012 and 13, and he sold a huge amount of his uh, property portfolio again in 2019 and 20. He even sold Blanchetown Shopping Center just before investors got a bit nervous about retail property here in Ireland. It is hard to time the overall market. Very few people can do it. Predictions can be made, but it is quite difficult to time the overall market. But that said, it becomes a lot easier to time the market if you focus in on certain sectors. So if you focus in on particular sectors in terms of locations or actual sectors in terms of retail, office or residential, it becomes a little bit easier to time the market a little bit better if you understand some of the trends within that local area. So overall, I believe timing is very important for real estate investments. Some of the best deals I've seen are purely based on timing where someone got in and out of the market at the right time. However, I do believe that the best deals out there, timing is not that important because if you find a deal that meets all your criteria, and is a good deal, a good real estate deal, I think that will stack up in most times regardless of timing. So when you are buying a property, think of that future area in terms of population growth or future trends within that area in terms of uh, supply and demand, and also think about what the long-term future is of that particular area. If all of those things kind of line up, then generally speaking, timing may not have a huge impact on your deal. So beyond timing and getting lucky, when is the best time to buy a property? Well, if you are a homeowner or a home occupier and you are looking to buy your family home, generally speaking, I think the best time to buy a property is when you have your finance uh, available and you can find the right location that meets your needs as a family right now and into the next kind of 10 to 20 years. If all of those things kind of line up in terms of location for work, location for school, transport, etc., and you have the funds and the ability to buy, I don't think timing makes much of a difference. It's when you have the ability to buy is the most crucial factor. Therefore, if you're gonna be in a property for the next 20 years, timing probably doesn't have a big impact on that deal. With that being said, I'm still seeing houses that were bought in 2007 that are still in negative equity nearly 14 years later. If you are buying an investment property, I think it's important for you to control as much as you possibly can. I think you should be looking to control the price, the location, the use, and the yield. If all of those things match up, I don't think you should be worried too much about where the market is going because if you've made your calculations right and you've analyzed that property right, it still should stack up no matter what. They say the best way to predict the future is invent it yourself. And the same can be a little bit true when it comes to real estate investing. If you uh, set good investment criteria or good deal criteria in terms of real estate investing, you can predict the future a little bit. And timing a deal may not be that important. And I think the timing element of uh, that side of the deal comes into knowing when to actually complete the deal. So if your location, yield, price, 
and potential future growth all line up at the same time and a deal presents itself. The timing element is knowing how to complete that deal as quickly as you possibly can. Before I forget, if you do want that Clubhouse invite that I have spare, the first person to DM me on Instagram and likes this video, I will give it to them. But make sure you have an iPhone because right now Clubhouse is only working on iPhones. When is the best time of the year to find a deal? Well, I believe there's probably two months of the year that kind of open themselves up for finding the best deals during the year. That's a normal year. I'm going to say this straight off. It's a normal year, obviously 2020, probably 2021 this year, and maybe a little bit into next year might be a little bit different because of all the lockdowns. But what I'm referring to is a normal year and a normal market. So first off, I think July is a good time to try to find a deal. And I believe this because a lot of uh, solicitors are away, schools are off, and a lot of people aren't in the mood to go around and view properties on nice sunny evenings or nice Saturdays. And therefore, there's less people viewing the properties. A good agent should be advising their client not to put their property on the market in June and July and hold off till September. But Properties will be on the market. There won't be quite as many, but there will be properties on the market. And I do believe it is a good time to get a good deal because there's less people viewing and therefore there's less people putting in offers. December is another good month to try pick up a deal. And it's the same again. Viewing numbers are generally down and therefore offers are down. A lot of people have Christmas parties to go to or Christmas shopping during the weekend. And they've also, a lot of people will have put off their uh, aspirations to find a house in that particular year till next year and will be hoping that they will find a property the following year. This also means that vendors kind of can get a little bit nervous around the, this period and they may want to get a deal secured before the end of the year. And this sometimes allows for good opportunities to buy property just before Christmas. Timing can be a big factor in any real estate deal and sometimes it's down to pure luck, but you can use timing in your favor. If you have liked this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And happy house hunting. I know it is a very difficult time right now to be house hunting. I myself personally believe supply will hopefully come back a little bit come uh, Q3 and Q4 of this year. Once people get comfortable enough letting other people into their house, once enough people have been vaccinated. It is a curious question to ask as well in terms of viewings and vaccinations. Will there be a requirement for you to be vaccinated before you go view a house? These are all things that might come up in the next uh, few months or next year. Right now, viewings are not allowed until at least the 5th of March. Therefore, viewings right now are only online. Um, hopefully after the 5th of March, viewings will open up again, but I, I'd imagine you will only be allowed to view a property for the next few months if you can prove that you've proof of funds in place. And also viewings will be likely limited to two people per household and that, that house will probably or that property will have to be vacant. Um, and I definitely think viewing will be hard over the next few months, but I do think in the next year, everything will return to normal and people will be back viewing properties on Saturday mornings, etc. within the next kind of two years. As always, I wanna say thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. It does mean a lot to me and happy house hunting.